Welcome to Timmy's Duelist podcast series. In this series, I share with you my favorite articles from the Duelist magazine. This is episode number four. And today I'm going to read to you Five Player Magic, an article from Duelist number one that was written by Mose Wingard. Five Player Magic by Mose Wingard. I looked to my left at Blue and he shook his head in powerless sympathy. He could not help me against Red. Red's divisive tactics had caused tension early on. First he brought out the Ankh of Mishra, then laid a web of mana barbs across the lands. Enemy and ally alike would fall to his erosive design, unless he were taken out of the picture, and quickly. My power was not great, but he had used his strength early, and white, green and black would not help me. They could not find reason to hinder me either. It was not long before the red mage had fallen and the real battle began. I needed to stop Blue, who was working furiously against Green, my only partner against Black. But did I dare risk angering my Blue ally? I pretended to unknowingly permit Green to take the upper hand in his battle against Blue. I could easily have finished off Blue then, but I wanted to use his power to my advantage. I offered to protect him if he would expend some of his power against Black his ally against Green. He agreed. But he had a way out that I hadn't foreseen. I used my remaining strength to hold off the blow of Green. Blue could now strike against Black and be protected from Green, as we had agreed. I was shocked to see his creature move on the offensive against me. Stunned and drained of power, I could do nothing but watch, helplessly as I was destroyed. Not surprisingly, Black solidified his unspoken alliance with Blue the next round with defense and a stunning blow to Green. I would have commiserated with Green's position, but a dead face holds no pity. I have no doubt that he was not left to suffer long. The game depicted here is one of several multiplayer versions of Magic the Gathering, which we have designed and played at the Omni Group. Magic is a game remarkable in its versatility, and it lends itself well to variations. The five-player duel in particular seems a natural extension of the five-color game, and it is interesting both because of the variety of spells that are played and the complexity of the interactions that occur. Beginning play. The five players, each representing one color of magic, sit in a circle in the order depicted on the back of a magic card. White, blue, black, red, green. Each player has his own deck, composed of creatures and spells of a single color, land for that color and any desired artifact. The enemies of any given player are the two people across from him and his allies are the people sitting just to either side. Each color therefore is pitted directly against its two traditional enemies. Play rotates to the left in a star-shaped pattern, skipping every other player. White, black, green, blue, red. Offense and Defense Each game turn follows the pattern established in the original version of Magic. While the casting of spells and tapping and untapping of creatures is the same as in the two-player version, other aspects of gameplay have been modified. First, since each player has more than one opponent, each player may attack more than one person during his attack phase. If more than one person is to be attacked in a game turn, the attacker must specify which creatures or attacking each player. Secondly, a spell that normally affects the opponent will affect either of the two people opposite to the caster. Not both. The player should state at which opponent any given spell or artifact is aimed when it's first cast. If the spell or effect remains for more than a single round, such as with an enchantment like Life Tap or an artifact like Black Vice, its object may be changed during the controller's upkeep. Likewise, spells or effects that normally affect just the caster, stream of life, force field, and so on, may affect either the caster or one of his two allies. Again, the subject must be chosen at casting time and may be altered during upkeep. Sharing resources. The rules governing this aspect of the game are extraordinarily flexible and help can keep the five player variation interesting. However, Whatever rules you use should be discussed and decided upon before the game starts. Or you may have some very unhappy players. 
No player has the right to look at another player's hand, even if they are allies, nor are they allowed to discuss cards they currently have. While allies may discuss general strategy, it must be done openly. Only the active player may attack during his or her turn, and he she may not use any of his allies' creatures or other resources to assist him. One exception to this is mana. The active player may borrow mana from a consenting ally, though the ally may set any conditions that he or she desires. Mana that is borrowed does not move in front of the borrower, but rather taps in front of the owner, untapping as normal during the owner's untap phase. Non-active players may also choose to assist another player by using instants and interrupts. For example, a player may reduce the damage suffered by an ally being attacked by using a healing solve on the defending player rather than on himself. Eliminating players. When a player loses all his life points, he is eliminated from the game. All of the player's cards remain in play, but they are no longer under that player's control. Lands may be borrowed for mana freely by the deceased player's allies. However, since the player no longer has an untapped phase, this mana may only be used once. Artifacts, unless continuous, cannot be used, because there is no one around to use them. However, any artifact may be copied, stolen, shattered or disenchanted, as usual. Similarly, creatures may be cloned or stolen, but cannot be controlled by other players. All enchantments or spells remain in effect on the player's cards, including spells cast after a player leaves the game. Winning A player wins if his two enemies are eliminated from the game before he is. It is possible for there to be more than one winner in a game. One player's victory does not stop gameplay. A player that has won a game while others are still competing may either choose to quit the game, leaving his creatures, artifacts and land to act in a way that a deceased players would, or may continue playing to honor an agreement, for example, or to act as a spoiler until the game is concluded. Strategy When Magic play to a 5-person game, there are some basic strategies you should consider. First, know your opponents. Does the person playing red have a penchant for lightning bolts? Also be careful to balance your deck. A white deck full of banalish heroes and Mesa Pegasi, for example, won't be much good if black gets a pestilence out. Don't ignore the complex interactions in this variation. You might just want to ask which of his two enemies your ally is going to attack before you lend him your mana, since one of his enemies is your other ally. Of course, there is no way to enforce a treaty or agreement so don't ever leave yourself too open to betrayal. Then again, it's easy to get too cautious. Remember that you're not the only one that has two opponents. Be willing to seize the advantage when you have the opportunity. And finally, load your deck with some defense. If you're lucky, smart and tough enough, you can let your allies do most of the dirty work against your opponents. And that was the article, Five Player Magic, written by Mose Wingard, and you can find it in Duelist number one. Thank you very much for listening to another podcast here, the podcast series on Timmy Talks, the channel where I guess we podcast old school magic articles. And for now, thank you very much for listening. Please leave a like on your way out, and I hope to see you next time. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee!